Chapter Nineteen of Kabumpo in Oz. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Pam Castile. Kabumpo in Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. Chapter Nineteen. Ozma takes things in hand. Prince Pompadour jumped up quickly. I told you she wouldn't. He choked, looking reproachfully at Kabumpo. I'm not half good enough. He doesn't always look so scratched up and shabby, wheezed Kabumpo breathlessly. We've been scorched and pinched and kidnapped. We've been through every kind of hardship to save your highness. And now the elegant elephant slouched against a tree, the picture of discouragement. He seemed to have forgotten the jewels that were to have won the princess for Pompa, and his threat of running off with her should she refuse him. "'Why, you don't even know me!' cried Ozma, dismayed by even the thought of marrying. For though the little ruler of Oz has lived almost a thousand years, she is no older than you are, and would no more think of marrying than Dorothy, or Betsy Bobbin, or Trot. Ruling the kingdom of Oz takes almost all of Ozma's time and in any that is left she wants to play and enjoy herself like any other sensible little girl. For Ozma is only a little girl fairy after all. I'm not going to marry anybody, she declared stoutly. Then, because she really was touched by Pompa's woe-begone appearance, she asked more kindly, Why did you want to marry me especially? Because you are the properest princess in Oz, groaned the prince, leaning disconsolately against Kabumpo. "'because if we don't, Pumperdink will disappear, "'and my poor old father and my mother and every one. "'Not to speak of us,' gulped the elegant elephant. "'But where is Pumperdink, and who said it would disappear?' "'asked Ozma in amazement. "'And how did you happen to have this trick tea and come to rescue me?' "'The prince always rescues the princess he intends to marry,' "'said Kabumpo wearily. "'I should think you'd know that.' "'Well, I'm very grateful, and I'll do anything I can except marry you,' exclaimed Ozma, who was beginning to feel very much interested in this strange pair. "'Thank you,' said Kabumpo stiffly, for he was deeply offended. "'Thank you, but we must be going. Come along, Pompa. "'Don't be a gooch.' This time it was Pompa who spoke. "'I'm going to tell her everything.' And Pompa, being, as I have told you before, the most charming prince in the world, made Ozma a comfortable throne of green boughs, and throwing himself at her feet, poured out the whole story of their adventures, beginning with the birthday party and the mysterious scroll. He told of their meeting with Peg, Amy, and Wag, and ended up with the ride upon the runaway country. Kabumpo stood by, swaying sulkily. He was very much disappointed in the Princess of Oz. He felt that she had no proper appreciation of his pompous importance. "'I'm going to find Peg,' he called finally. "'She's got more sense than any of you,' he wheezed under his breath as he swept grandly out of sight. Ozma put both hands to her head as Pompa finished his recital, and really it was enough to puzzle any fairy. Scrolls, live wooden dolls, a giant rabbit— a mysterious magician threatening disappearances, and Ruggedo's wicked use of the box of mixed magic. Goodness, cried the little ruler of Oz. I wish the scarecrow would come back. He's so clever, I'm sure he could help us. But first you had better bring me the magic box. Pompa rose slowly, and picking up all the little flasks and boxes that had spilled out when Wag pounded Ruggedo, he put them back into the casket and handed it to Ozma. She examined the contents as curiously as the others had done. The expanding extract was the only thing missing, for Ruggedo had poured the whole bottle over his head. The question box seemed to Ozma the most wonderful of all Gleg's magic. Why, "'All we have to do is ask the box questions,' she cried in excitement. "'Has my palace reached the Emerald City?' she asked breathlessly. "'Shake it three times,' said Pompa, as Ozma looked in vain for her answer. "'Yes,' stated the box after the third shake, and Ozma sighed with relief. 
"'I suppose you asked it if I were the proper princess mentioned in the scroll?' she said a bit shyly. The prince shook his head. "'Knew without asking,' said Pompa heavily. "'Do you mean to say you never asked it that?' gasped Ozma in disbelief. "'Why, I am surprised at you!' And before Pompa could object, she shook the little box briskly. "'Who is the princess that Pompa must marry?' she demanded anxiously. "'The princess of Sun Top Mountain,' flashed the question box promptly. Then, as an afterthought, it added, "'Trust the mirror and golden doorknob.' "'Now you see,' cried Ozma, jumping up in delight, "'I wasn't the proper princess at all.' Papa smiled faintly, but without enthusiasm. The thought of hunting another princess was almost too much. "'I wish I could just take Peg, Amy, and Wag, and go back to Pumperdink without marrying anybody,' he choked bitterly. "'Now don't give up,' advised Ozma kindly. "'It was very wrong of Glick to cause you all this trouble. "'I'm going to keep his box of mixed magic "'and take away all his powers when I find him. "'But until I do, you'll have to follow directions. "'Oh, mercy! What's that?' "'They both ducked and turned around in a hurry "'as a terrific thumping sounded behind them. "'It's the runaway country again,' cried Pompa, "'seizing Ozma's hands in distress.' and it's caught all the others. The scarecrow had climbed a tree and was waving to them wildly as the country galloped nearer. Might as well come aboard, he called genially. This is a fast country, no arguing with it at all. Ozma looked helplessly at Pompa, and the prince had only time to grasp her more firmly when the country scooped them neatly into the air. Down they tumbled, beside Peg, Amy, and Wag, and the elegant elephant. "'What do you mean by this?' demanded Ozma, as soon as she regained her breath. "'Don't you know this lady is the ruler of all Oz?' cried Pompa warningly. "'Peg's the ruler of me,' replied the country calmly. "'I nearly lost her once, but now I've caught her and all the rest, "'and I am not going to stop until I've reached the Nonestic Ocean. "'Giants or no giants?' "'Ozma had been somewhat prepared for the runaway country by Pompa's description, "'but she had never dreamed it would dare to run off with her. "'While Peg Amy began to coax it to stop, "'she took out Glug's little question-box.' "'How shall I stop this country?' she whispered anxiously. "'Spin around six times and cross your fingers,' directed the question box. This Ozma proceeded to do, much to the agitation of the scarecrow, who thought she had taken leave of her senses. But next instant the country came to a jolting halt. "'Peg! Princess Peg!' shrieked the island. "'I am bewitched! I can't move a step!' "'Then everybody off!' shouted the scarecrow, jerking a branch of a tree as if he were a conductor. "'End of the line! Everybody off!' And they lost no time tumbling off the wild little country. "'It seems too bad to leave it,' said Peg Amy regretfully, picking herself up. "'It threw us off without any feeling or consideration when it saw Ruggedo,' sniffed Kabumpo. "'Therefore it has no claims on us whatsoever.' "'But couldn't you do something for it?' asked Peg, approaching Ozma timidly. "'It's so tired of being a plateau. Couldn't you let it be an island and find someone to settle on it? I wouldn't mind going,' she added generously. "'You shall do nothing of the sort,' cried Kabumpo angrily. "'You're going back to Pumperdink with Pompa and me.' "'She's going with me,' cried Wag. "'Aren't you, Peg?' "'You seem to be a very popular person,' smiled Ozma. "'While the country has no right to run away, and while I never heard of one doing it before, I've no objections to its being an island. It's running off with people I object to,' she looked at the country sternly in its lake eyes. "'But I can't move,' screamed the country, tears streaming down its hill. "'And I've got to have somebody to settle me.' "'Oh, here's Glinda,' shouted the scarecrow, tossing up his hat. Now we shall know what's happened to Ruggedo. Leaving the country for a moment, they all ran to welcome the good sorceress of Oz. Glinda's reports were most satisfactory. 
Ruggedo had walked straight back to the Emerald City, stepped into the yawning cavern, and immediately the palace had settled firmly upon its old foundations. Then had come a muffled explosion, and when Glinda and Dorothy ran through the secret passage, which had been discovered, meanwhile, by the soldier with the green whiskers, they saw Ruggedo, shrunking to his former size, sitting angrily on his sixth rock of history. "'I have locked him up in the palace,' finished Glinda, "'and I strongly advise your highness to punish him severely.' Ozma sighed. "'What would you do?' she asked, appealing to the scarecrow. So many things had come up for her attention and advice in the last few hours that the little fairy ruler felt positively dizzy. "'Let's all sit down in a circle and think,' proposed the scarecrow cheerfully. This they all did except Kabumpo, who stood off glumly by himself. Peg was looking anxiously at Pompadour, for the elegant elephant had told her of Ozma's refusal, and wondering sadly what she could do to help, when the scarecrow bounced up impulsively. "'I have it,' chuckled the straw man. "'Let's send Ruggedo off on the runaway country. He deserves to be banished, and, if Ozma makes the country an island, he can do no harm.' Here Ozma had to stop and explain to Glinda about the country that wanted to be an island, and after a short consultation they decided to take the Scarecrow's advice. "'Just as soon as I reach the Emerald City, I'll put on my magic belt and wish him on to the island,' declared Ozma. "'And I think we'd better go right straight back,' she added thoughtfully, "'for it's growing darker every minute, and Dorothy will be anxious to hear everything that's happened. "'Now you—' Ozma tapped Pompadour gently on the arm. You must start at once for Suntop Mountain. I'm going to ask the question box just where it is. Pompa sighed deeply, and when Ozma consulted the question box as to the location of Suntop Mountain, it stated that this kingdom was in the very center of the North Winky country. That's fine, said Ozma, clapping her hands. I'll have the runaway country carry you over the deadly desert, and as soon as you have married the princess, you must bring her to see me in the Emerald City. What's all this? demanded Kabumpo, pricking up his ears. The question box says I must marry the princess of Suntop Mountain, said Papa, getting up wearily. Well, great grump, why couldn't it have said so before? asked Kabumpo shrilly. "'You never asked it,' snapped Wag, twitching his nose. "'I told you Ozma wasn't the princess mentioned in the scroll.' "'Now don't quarrel,' begged Peg Amy, jumping up hastily. "'There's still plenty of time to save Pumperdink. Come along, Pompa.' "'That's right,' said Ozma, smiling approvingly at Peg. "'And when Pompa finds his princess, you must come and live with me in the Emerald City. "'For as Ruggedo was responsible for bringing you to life, I want to take care of you always. Peg Amy dropped a curtsy and promised to come, but she didn't feel very cheerful about it. Then, as Ozma was anxious to get back to the Emerald City, they all hurried to runaway country. You are to take these travelers across the deadly desert, said Ozma, addressing the runaway country quite sternly, and you are to set them down in the winky country. If you do this, I will restore your moving power again, and give you a little gnome for king. Then you may run off to the nonestic ocean as soon as ever you wish. I want Peg, pouted the country, but if that's the best you can do, I suppose I'll have to stand it. After a little more grumbling, it agreed to Ozma's terms. Wearily, Kabumpo, Wag, Peg, and Pompa climbed aboard, and then Ozma spun around six times in the opposite direction, and immediately the country found itself able to move again. "'Good-bye,' called Ozma, as she and the Scarecrow jumped into Glinda's chariot. "'Good-bye and good luck!' "'Good-bye,' called Peg, waving her old torn bonnet. "'Good riddance,' grumbled the country gruffly, and turning sideways, began running toward the deadly desert." End of chapter 19 Recording by Pam Castile